One thing about this movie that makes me really happy is as much as I love Doctor Strange, I'm so happy that you are back in this horror realm right now. So a twofold question for you on that. What is something about your experience working on a gigantic MCU project that you found influencing how you operate on a set like this? But then what's something about making a movie like Black Phone that I guess kind of felt like coming home to you where you were so excited to tap back into that particular quality of making a movie like this? I mean, look, I, uh, you know, from the heart, I had an amazing experience working on Doctor Strange. Um, but when you're making a movie that size uh, for Marvel, you, you really are working with, uh, you know, with Kevin Feige. You're really co-making the movie with him and you're working, you're, you're, there's a lot of people creating, you know, giving influence into the process. I felt very supported making that movie. I made the movie I wanted to make. But it's different than when you're talking about a smaller uh, contained horror film because then you really function like an auteur. It, it's all on you. And Jason Blum is the greatest producer, you know, on both Sinister and this movie. All he did was just say, whatever you need, make the movie you want to make. And so it was all up to me. And, uh, and I, in both cases, I made exactly the film I wanted to make. The funny thing about it, though, is that every, you know, Sinister was $3 million. This movie was 18 uh, Doctor Strange was over 200 million. They're all the same. You never have enough time or money. <laughs> you know, you always have the same problem. I need more time. I need more money. You know, it doesn't matter what the budget is. Oh, I would believe it. All right. So one of my favorite qualities of this movie is usually I get very obsessed with backstory, but you managed to keep a lot about the grabber, the phone itself, and also Gwen's ability. I mean, not necessarily secret, but you don't explain it away. So is that something where you could feel out in the script phase that you're giving the audience enough? Or is it a matter of, you know, needing to keep an eye out for something like that in test screenings? I, You know, th th look, we did test screenings. And a lot of the test screening audiences said, we'd like to know more about the grabber. And so there was some pressure put on to me to write some more about the grabber. And I refused. I said, I want them to want to know more about the grabber. I want them to feel that way. But trust me, if I give them more, the grabber will not be as scary. I mean, how scary would the Joker be in Chris Nolan's Dark Knight if we actually explained exactly what, how he did get his scars. If we did that, he'd be less scary. If we explained why Hannibal Lecter eats people, he would be less scary, you know? And so I think with these sort of antisocial, really aggressive, really bizarre, fascinating villains, um, there's mystery to evil. There's, the, and keeping it mysterious as to why they do the extreme things that they do, allows the audience to infer possibilities and to think for themselves and keeping it mysterious just makes them more frightening. I could not agree more. I think you pulled that quality off quite well here. Another thing I appreciated about the film is I am obsessed with Sinister and it did feel like it had echoes of that movie. So were those things you deliberately strove to do? And when you think about this world, is it the kind of situation where I don't know, you envision this taking place in, in a town or a state over kind of thing. I don't see them in the same universe, but certainly, you know, we got the band back together. I got, I got, you know, my writing partner Cargill and Ethan and Jason Blum and, and PJ Ransone is, you know, is all, all, all of these sort of similar things. The use of Super 8 footage, you know, which I used for the, for the kill films in Sinister. I use for very different purposes in this, um, which was to uh, represent uh, the dreams of the kind of backstories or back story images of some of the of the dead kids in the movie. Um, so there's some stylistic overlap, but I do think that the, at, at the heart, you know, Sinister is a very bleak, not a mean spirited movie, but it's a very bleak and very ruthless movie. You know, looking at. Uh, at um, the consequences of, of, of selfish ambition. And, uh, and in this movie, I wanted to make something from the point of view of love. And I wanted to make something that was very suspenseful and very scary, but that also was um, full of uh, love and, and hope and humor. And ultimately, I think a kind of inspiration. It's certainly the most positive movie I've ever made. Above and beyond one of my favorite qualities, you terrify me, but you give me those feelings of hope too. That is one heck of a balance to pull off. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it.